So we're here at uh, ID TechX, and hi, so who are you? Uh, my name is Laura Frisk. I'm the CEO of Trellic. Hi. So Trellic here, uh, .fee. Are you from Finland? Yes, we are from Finland. And uh, hi, so who are you? Hi, my name is Sanna Lahokallio. I'm also working at Trellic. So um, what, is, what are we seeing here? So this is our small bending tester. So it's currently uh, uh, testing a PET film, which have been printed with silver ink. And then there is uh, some LEDs connected to it using uh, electrical conductive adhesive. So what we provide is the test service to uh, analyze and test uh, flexible and stretchable structures. It's and very so important to test, right? Because yes. a lot of people here are doing cool stuff, but are they all testing as they should? I, I don't think so. No? <laughs> you don't think so? No, and I think the reliability is also something everybody understands that it's very important. But then, then we, you start to talk about it, they say that, yeah, we are developing this. And you say that, yeah, we should consider reliability also. And they, yes, but we are going to do this first. And then they finally have the perfect product. And then they start to test and realize that there is something fundamentally wrong in the product from reliability point of view and that can be extremely expensive and also time consuming. So it's good to start consider reliability as early as possible and also test it and kind of make sure that the structures you are using really can withstand the, the conditions you are going to use them in. I can imagine some people or uh, engineers might be a little bit sad if you actually show them that there's an issue with their product, right? Yes, but it's, it's so it's nice. Like a, a, it's like a nightmare, a little bit. No, it's not, but I'm joking, but it's not. But it's, it's not a nightmare if you get it done early. No, because then you can fix it. I think it's a nightmare when you have everything finished and you are planning to, you know, go to, to the market with your excellent product and suddenly you realize that the reliability isn't there. Or worse yet, you have actually have the product, you are selling the product, and then you realize that the, the reliability is not as it should, because that can be really catastrophic. So uh, that's why it's very important to test it as early as possible. So you designed this? Yes, this has, uh, has been made by one of our, our workers. We are actually, this is our small one, and then we have a bigger one which is validate, validated at the moment. Uh, and that we can use also inside a test chamber so that we can control humidity, for example, use higher humidity levels or high temperature or combination of these with the mechanical testing. So that will accelerate the test and... How do you test humidity? So uh, humidity testing normally is we have a test chamber where we can control uh, the humidity levels and then we can also control uh, temperature. So you, we put sam samples in. Normally we try to always measure something, for example, electrical conductivity or something which we can measure in real time to see when the product fail or if it doesn't fail. Uh, does it behave as it should? And then, of course, after testing, we do failure analysis and analyze what went wrong and how did it behave. And so you do an analysis like this? Uh, yeah, that's here's the stuff about what's going Oh, can you show? Yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah. yeah, so this is, for example, this is, this is a guide we did write about uh, about reliability and why it's important and why it's important to test as early as possible and what kind of things you need to take into consideration when you are, are uh, thinking about how to test and what to test and at what stage. So it gives kind of basics of reliability and yeah, those are our test wires. We call them Hello Kitty wires. You have lots of wires? <laughs> Mostly yes, because we can measure we can have hundreds of structures within inside our test chamber and then we measure all of those and analyze the data and uh, so on. Is so, it Helsinki or? No, it's Stamper, so it's 200 Stamper. kilometers north of Helsinki. It's, it's better, right? Yeah, it's definitely. Yeah. We, we got, yeah. get lots of snow during winter, <laughs> like uh, Helsinki. And what do you do? Um, well, I work mainly with materials, so do material characterization and uh, so are there lots of uh, interesting materials going on in this industry? What's the what's the hottest one that's the most important to test right now? There's a silver uh, nano, silver gray. stuff. Uh, what's it yeah. called? Of course, okay. na nano yeah. things are very yeah. hip and pop, and there are some reliability issues with those. But 
I guess when we regard this kind of things, it's probably flexible structures, flexible materials, how to get, for example, adhesives flexible but still reliable. And uh, here at the show, do you have lots of people coming here and saying, hey, I need this, or what's going on? Yeah, quite a lot, yes. I have been yeah. positively surprised. <laughs> yes, definitely. Yeah. It has been very good. We have had good con conversations, and uh, people start to realize that you need to take reliability seriously and not just you know, consider it at some point and uh, you need to do it properly. Of course, there are no, uh, if we consider traditional electronics, we have more uh, standards and there are methods people have always used. And even in those areas, there has been a change that we get more and more tailored testing and more and more kind of, you need to consider what kind of test to use. But uh, especially when we are talking about new structures, new materials, it is so important to really consider what you test, at what conditions and how you do it to make sure that, that your product is reliable. And uh, it can be quite, quite a challenge. Uh, have you been to the ID Tech Act show? Uh, this is our second time, but second time. last year we didn't have our own booth. Or, or so what do you think booth. about the show? Uh, it's, it's really nice. Last year it was brilliant and so far it has been really nice too. And so, so people just ship you the stuff to Finland or you sell the machine to everywhere? No, we don't sell equipment. So people send us what needs to be tested and then we discuss what shall be tested, what, what kind of uh, conditions and test methods we are going to use, and also about what kind of, for example, failure analysis uh, methods we are going to use, so how we are going to analyze what's going on in the test chamber. Do you do stuff like flexible displays? You know those new flexible phones that are coming out and stuff like that? How do they test? Because uh, it's not I'm good if the phone just breaks and if you no. fold it ten times, right? We haven't done that. But there are so many things to consider when you have the full display. I mean, you, you yeah. are not just talking about mechanical robustness, but also about how, for example, uh, how you use the, use the, uh, the display. So that will be a slightly different approach. Shouldn't you be testing all kinds of angles? Uh, yes, and that is something... No, at the moment we don't, and that is something we are developing at the moment, so that we could uh, do also, for example, twisting and other sorts of mechanical uh, uh, stresses, because that is extremely important too. Are you the market leader for this? Uh, I don't really. I think the market is just developing, so I, I don't know actually what, what's the situation in the market at the moment about bending testing. All but right. of course, if we consider reliability testing in general, there are lots of lots of big companies doing that. But many of them are are specialized in in very, for example, auto industry and doing st standard testing. So we are specialized in testing new structures and structures which don't yet have, for example, standards and uh, clear procedures. So where so you which one are you, for example, looking into right now? What's the new structure you you targeting? Oh, for us, at the moment, it's it's all kind of bending and especially as I was talking, combination of stresses. So combination of humidity, because humidity goes into the... If we have, as here, we have PET structure and uh, uh, PET does not absorb a huge amount of moisture, but it definitely does and it goes to the interfaces and it can destroy such a structure a lot quicker than just doing this uh, at room temperature. So at the moment what we are looking at is the combination of different stresses and how that affects the, the reliability and how that should be taken into account. Uh, so does all this industry, print electronics, all that, does it work? I mean, because you would be the ones to know, right? <laughs> if it's all reliable and everything? That's a, that's a, not a very good question um, to ask It's a bad here. question, sorry. <laughs> I, no, no, I, I, I know it works, right? But uh, I think it's, it's going to be more, bigger and bigger. This yeah, kind it's of stuff. Go, yeah, and I think it will be... It is one of the problems. We, are, we have, for example, we have discussed about using um, such structures, printed structures, for example, in buildings, where we are talking about tens of years of use life. And at the moment, I would say that the reliability isn't there. So that will be one of the key issues. If you want to, for example, integrate sensor structure into a building, you need to be sure that it functions correctly. And at the moment, it's, it's. I wouldn't say that. I would say that it's, it's. 
at least it's not proven. A lot of a lot of this is maybe for cheap throwaway kind of things, maybe. Yes. Yes, yeah. and for that it works quite okay, but I think it's also people are more and more interested of using uh, printed structures in more demanding environments and sensor structures for IoT to build networks of uh, sensor structures and so on. And uh, for that we really need good reliability. And quite often we also need good bendability and for wearables, washability, and all these are still quite tricky to do. And for many structures it isn't yet quite there. Or it hasn't been analyzed enough to say that it's, it's as it should be. So uh, you just get a few more customers and then you get all kinds of new designs for testing, all kinds of new stuff, right? Or are you already busy uh, yes. building new tests? equipment and test structure. Yeah, we are at the moment, but we of course do lots of just um, standard testing too, because that's also important. It's not just bending testing, but it's also other other test conditions, such as, as we discussed, humidity testing, uh, high humidity, high temperature, tem temperature cycling, corrosion testing, especially when you are dealing with something you wear. We have salt, we have other uh, impurities, those need to be tested. So we are also working with lots of other methods and doing testing with those too. And in the winter you can just put it outside, see if it's still working when you bring it back, right? <laughs> yes, you can do that, but that's not very controlled. Okay. <laughs> it depends a lot Sorry. what kind of winter you get. Yeah. Cool. But that's that's done too, that's yeah. one of the test methods. That's what I meant. Okay. Yes. Okay. So it is a relevant test method, although as I said, it's not very controlled. Okay, thanks a lot. Thank you.